morning. I'm currently sitting outside of Lab Corp, waiting to do my drug test for Lazy Boys. I'm currently just, just relaxing, just busy my time. I'm hoping that this goes well. Um, I haven't done any drugs or alcohol or weed or anything, so I should be clean. Um, did do some, no, didn't do any weed. But me and Tanya were up at the, say, fair a week, like, actually a week ago today. And they had some, uh, some sort of weed balm that helps with joints. So, it's really just fine. It was a low, low enough dosage that it shouldn't be even in my system. Um, I didn't get high or anything off it, so we're just going to wait and see. But anywho, I'm here. Uh, my appointment is in about 20 minutes, so I'm just going to sit here patiently and wait. And as I wait, you know what? I changed my mind. I want to go in because the people are arriving to do their tests. I really don't want to be one of those guys in the line that waits forever. Same time, I don't mind. It gives me enough time to drink this entire bottle of water. It's like 8 30 in the morning, and I woke up like at 7 30 ish this morning. I already went to the bathroom. So I have to either drink a bunch of water and or else. Thank God this week is going to be a really simple and easy week. Um, literally, I just have this, the post office, and moving the last tiny bit of stuff over from my sisters. And that's it for this week. And then on Sunday, I have my birthday party at 7 o'clock p.m. After church in the morning and hang out with the benches in the afternoon, if that's what they're doing this week, I hope, I think. But, like... <sighs> this week, me and Scott might be doing our collaboration, which I totally forgot what our collaboration even was, because it's been like three weeks, so I need to ask him to refresh my mind on the collaboration. But, uh, you know, everything's going to be okay, you know, I'm going to be okay. Struggling this morning with a couple... I had to stop the video I was making this morning on the way here twice because for some reason my brain started to just I do this thing sometimes while I'm talking on a video and then I don't realize I've stopped talking and I'm just sitting there driving like normal and I'm thinking I'm processing whatever I'm thinking about and like this morning I've had two different thought things going through my brain this morning one I was there's a friend of mine who is living with his girlfriend and they have been together now for over a year and they're getting married in a year. I'm like, why is he married a year from now? Well, it's not your time. He ain't making enough, more, enough money. I'm just like, what? When did marriage become about money? Sheesh. Like me and my fiance, like we're not having this huge, giant, spectacular wedding, you know, but we're having a decent wedding. And we're getting married because we love each other. And we want to live together. You know? And that brought up my other issue I'm having, which is the fact that some people in my church family believe that me and Tanya moving in three months before we get married is not okay at all. And I'm just like, well, it's not your life. Not your choice. Tanya and I have both struggled with this. Talked about it. I even prayed about it. And I feel like it's okay. And you know what? I'm going to be okay with it. Me and her made a decision to buy a bed, and that's what our uh, condition was. What I would was that I would not move in entirely until we bought a bed, and we did for four thousand. <laughs> and we want to make sure we get a, a decent bed because it's it is our marital bed. It's going to be the bed we're going to be sleeping in for the rest of our lives, unless it breaks down and dies. In that case, we're screwed. But anywho. I'm still frustrated with the fact that I am unable to be part of the worship team 
or even serve at South Sound Church as long as Tanya and I are doing this. And like, my poor fiance, I love her very much. She has a, such a big heart. But she, she thinks she's to blame for all this. And I'm, both me and my pastor were just like, no, no, <laughs> you're not. And then Tanya and I went out to eat and I talked to her further about it and I wanted her to know that she had loved that I I made this choice. She didn't make me do it. She didn't influence me. I was on board with it long before I told her I was on board. I just was wanting to make sure that she's the type of person I'm going to be marrying. For me, moving in with someone, I made this mistake too many times. There was a girl I liked, and I loved that girl too death. Still to this day I care about her very, very much. She's my best friend. Right? And that happened. That's uh, not frustrating at all. Just uh, completely falling off. Still recording? Still recording? I'm going to fix this really quick. And we're going to... Wow, that wasn't anticlimactic at all. Oh. That was so random. I've never had that happen before. Anywho, that was, wow. Anywho, <laughs> um, the girl I was with, I loved her very much. And we lived together out of marriage. And we were together for about two and a half years. And one of the things I haven't told her to her face, and this is the first time we've talked about it on camera, one of the many reasons why I left, physically left living with her and left, moved back to Olympia was the fact because I knew her and I were done for. Um, I knew this within the first half a year. I knew. I just wasn't willing to accept it and I was fighting tooth and nail for our relationship. But over that time frame, me and Sarah's relationship was starting to get worse. Um, I was cheating on her with men and she was getting increasingly more controlling. I was being narcissistic and not listening to anything I should say. We had fights. We had so many fights. But like, none of them ended well. There was a time in the beginning of the relationship when we had fights and we were able to love each other afterwards. But like, it, is, it was just, it was a dead end. And I knew it from the very beginning. And I wasn't willing to accept it. And I spent years waiting for someone that didn't even want me. And that's on me. That is 100% on me. Don't, if someone says they don't want to be with you, and they're not even a Christian, and on top of that, they never intend to marry you in the first place, don't, don't date them. Don't do it. Especially if you're the type that, like, I'm going to marry someone. Don't make the mistake I did. I mean, it cost me a lot of years of emotional pain. And, you know... One of the things I want to make sure with me and Tanya is that we are on the same page. When it comes to my faith, when it comes to abortion, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to um, living life, um, what I would like from her as a partner, um, that's why we're doing premarital counseling. To work these things out and figure out what, who's who and what's what and what do we want with our relationship and have to beat these battles before we have to deal with them. Um, I'd rather be aware of these issues instead of not being aware and then being hit in the face when they come up. Um, one of the things I really appreciate about Tanya is in my relationships, we're able to fight over things, but then we're able to recover pretty quickly. Um, we could have a nasty fight and then not even 30 minutes after the nasty fight be hugging and cuddling, kissing each other, and loving each other. And it's just sometimes boggling, you know, when this is going on. You know, it's 8.22. I'll probably be back in a bit and continue this video. But, uh, I'm going to go for now. Oh. Just got done with my drug test. Uh, it was simple and easy. Painless to do. 
actually. For now, now I get to go to the post office. Take care of that. And then after that, head to Tanya, hang out with her before she leaves. And yeah. So back to what I was talking about the whole moving with Tanya thing. I know biblically there is some speculation and evidence that moving in with someone before marriage is a bad omen or a bad idea or it just is uncalled for. So here's the thing. What's the point of not living with someone if you're doing things outside of marriage you're supposed to? This is the very foundation of why me and Tanya are okay with moving out with each other. Um, I was not okay with it before we started stuff. I was like, nope. Uh, we even talked about this back when we were dating in November. She had come to me and was like, hey, how would you feel about moving in with me as a roommate as we're dating? And I'm going to be honest, I was extremely uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable. Let's just put it that way. I was uncomfortable with it because we weren't married, we weren't getting married, we were, I don't think we even were technically dating, I guess. Um, there were just a lot of issues at the time, so I was not okay with moving in. I liked the idea of it, but I was not okay with it. Um, but then... We took our relationship to the next level, and we got engaged, and we started doing things we weren't supposed to, and, you know, we decided to be smart about this, and we're like, you know, let's do premarital counseling on top of that, and we've been doing premarital counseling now for about two months, I want to say, yeah, about two months, and we're doing this before I move in. Um, we're on our last, I think, three weeks of premarital counseling, and then it'll be two months, and then boom, I'm married. And we've, I've prayed about this, I've struggled with this, I've asked for wisdom on this. I'm doing it because I want to. I'm doing it because I love Tanya. I'm doing it because we have made a agreement that once she got a bed for us, or we got a bed, um, I'll move in. And it's something that we both want to do. It saves on gas. Um, my sister is, has threatened to kick me out. Whether or not she's serious about it, I'm not going to take any chances. So I'd rather move in with a woman I'm going to be married with for the rest of my life than be forced on the streets. And on top of that, even though it's highly unlikely that Beth would do that to me, there is always that irrational fear. On top of that, I'm moving in with her because we both love each other very, very much. And we already basically live together as it is. We do. Um, we cook together, we eat together, we shop together, we do life together, we go to young adults together, we go to church together. We, we literally do everything together. So it doesn't make any sense not to move in at this point. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, no, no. And, you know, yesterday she got baptized and I, she's now equal to me in faith or in religious point of view. You know, that's one thing my church family has been very anal about over the years. And actually almost every, every church I've been a part of, is, that's one of the things they're anal about is that, that we do not marry non-Christians. And I'm like, I do. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Most Christians are stuck-ups and are assholes and are do-gooders or as I like to call them, Boy Scouts. Um, they are very self um uh, software, none of that. Um, they're very um, righteous people. At least they can be. Um, and I will. And I have made a rule that I will not date people my age. I will not. I refuse. Um, most women my age are either stupid, or they are not very smart, or 
they don't know what they want in life, they don't know what they're doing with their lives at age 26, or they're so spiritually wrapped up in this idea of, I love Jesus, that it's almost as if they're trying to date Jesus. And it's kind of like, this is unhealthy, this is not okay. Oh, a semi truck behind me. Wow. On Runnel, that is something you do not see every day. Okay, we're not, no, I'm not even gonna sit behind this dude. This dude freaks me out. <sighs> so, we made a choice. We're sticking to it. And if people are disappointed or feel like they can't be friends with me because, oh, I moved out with my fiance two, sorry, three months before we're getting married, um, okay. That means you weren't a friend to begin with. Um, people that are genuinely caring about me and Tanya, they're going to stick around. Um, those who are not, well, they're going to disappear and not be part of my life anymore. And I'm just going to be moving on with my life. So, or our life. That's another concept that is really hard to grasp sometimes. This whole concept of us sometimes. Um get lost sometimes in the whole like us me her as one even she has a hard time with this concept and her and I continue to struggle with it and learn with it um, it is quite interesting watching our interactions and looking back at some of the videos we make and actually rewatched last night no yes no was the last night or the, this morning? Oh, first one of the two. Anywho, in the past... Yeah, no lady, I'm going to turn and go. In the past, 20, sometime in the past 12 hours, I watched my and Tanya's short film we built, we made, not built, we made, which was, uh, we got engaged, and it was back in, in June, and I'm just I'm watching that and seeing how she at, interacts now on camera, compared to then, it's different, she's different, you know, um, she's just a wonderful woman, and I am so happy I get to spend my life with her and do stuff with her and do this thing called life. Um, we both have our fears about the other you know, when it comes to our relationship, but I feel like this is the most strongest, healthiest relationship I've ever been a part of, ever, period, in a subject. There's no better way to explain it. Um, the Holy Spirit is working on Tanya and making huge changes in Tanya that she herself does not fully comprehend. And it is wonderful watching these changes happen to her and through her. Um, she used to hate her mom. And now she has compassion and hopes that her mom comes to her wedding. Um, we both feel that that's not going to happen. She used to really hate her dad. Like, she would get angry just talking about it. Now she's able to have a discussion with me about her dad and not get overly angry about it. Um, same with her ex, Dwayne, who was with her for 13 years. Very abusive. Um, now she can talk about the guy. And even tell strangers about about him. And not be overwhelmed. And be destructive. Um, the lists just kind of go on and on. Other things I've been watching. They're changing our life. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. Honestly. I am astonished at what God's doing in her life and seeing her transform from who I know her from from last year to who she is today she's becoming a whole different person entirely and it's nothing that I'm doing or my church family it's it's all God it's all God it, there's just no other way to explain it but anywho, I'm approaching the post office, so I'm going to get going. I need to get my address changed, and hopefully they're not going to be a pain in the butt about it. You need to bring blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, guess what? Chicken butt. That's what. No. Anywho, we can get going. 
and I'll um, continue this video after I visit the post office. All right, see ya. Well, that was a complete utter bullshit of time. Didn't take very long, thankfully. That's why I go early in the morning, so the afternoon. Well, to get into this, I got my thing, so I can go change my address. The bad news is, I'm probably gonna have to come back in again to prove that I'm actually Victor Joshua Hanna and change my address. It's just like, really, bruh? So I'm hoping they get me on the lease before I do the change of address and then get that change. It's just, it's just a lot of, I feel like, unnecessary steps to do all of this stuff. And it's just like, bruh, really? Why can't I just do here, fill it out, give it to you guys, have you guys just take it and change of address like that? So it's just, it's annoying, so. Um, still no news from the apartment, whether or not I'm being let go from this apartment so I can, and I haven't got hard news from the other apartment either, whether or not I'm going to be able to move from, into that apartment. So I'm just kind of in limbo right now where I might be forced to live on Tanya's, at Tanya's apartment without being on her lease. And then forced to stay on the lease here at my sister's. So I'm going to have to make some decisions pretty soon. How to go about that. Um, it's, it's not fair to be not on Tanya's lease, pay rent, and be on my sister's lease and not pay rent. So it's like I want to end one contract and join the other one. Just less, less messy that way because my sister's already told me that if I fully move out, I doubt I have to pay like October's rent. Um, I'm giving her 800 for her troubles over the last couple months. And it's just this guy looks so freaking weird. I don't trust this guy. He's all whacking his head around. Looks like a crazy man. Anywho, um, yeah, no, I'm gonna head over to Tanya's now and bring the stuff upstairs. I got two pieces of paper today. That's my takeaway. But hey, I got a drug test done, and on top of that, I, uh, I got a bunch of other stuff I need to get done done. So, all in all, today, today was a good day. Today's a good day. You know, I'm getting business done a lot quicker than I anticipated. I thought it was going to take me to like, man, what do I do this every time I do this to myself? I usually go for the college for this exact reason. Because usually going down freaking Pacific Avenue through Ruddle and College Street and all that, usually there's lights going against me the entire time. Every time. But anywho, that's okay. I'm not in a rush to do anything this morning. I'm probably going to be honest. I'm probably just going to go upstairs, eat breakfast with my fiance, or have leftovers actually. I might have a burrito. I have a burrito that I can just warm up and eat. I'm probably going to eat. And then hang out with Tanya until she leaves, and then do my own thing until she gets back. Um, don't know what all I'm doing today. I might do some upgrading to my channel. I don't know. I might work on a couple other things. I just don't know what I want to do quite yet. And you know what? We're going to do this the Victor way. Just fuck this shit. I am not going to go wait for that that bus. Screw that bus. To a shortcut through Limeberry's parking lot because <clears throat> I do not feel like standing being behind the bus all the way to College Street this morning. I just want to do what I need to do and get going. Luckily, I know shortcuts. And here we go. Ha! I just bypassed nine cars. I didn't even have to speed. I can do that. No, little shortcuts. Little shortcuts. And they matter. Oh, they matter. So, 
hopefully in the next day or two I should hear from the apartment people peoples and I should hear from my new job possibly um, a couple other things I'm hoping to hear from um, just kind of depends on life uh, one can only hope so I'm gonna have hope don't you dare do it don't you dare do it okay So anywho, I'm approaching Tanya's apartment, so I'm going to get going, but uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching this morning's podcast.